Afghan intelligence connected assets of Mossad in Afghanistan. Okay. Who were planning attacks in Iran. Okay. And I think Europe is clear that you cannot tell them that you know you are next. <laughs> <laughs> you think Biden will run again? That's what they're saying. My God, imagine that guy running again. It's a it's a clear loss. It's it's Isn't a, it already done. Yeah, well, <laughs> the Saudis are also concerned that the lesser dependence on fossil fuels will impact. It will impact them. Yes. So, Mir Basinji, welcome back to the podcast. Thank it's you. wonderful to have you on. Thank you. So, last time we discussed Afghanistan mainly. Today, let's uh, cover global geopolitics, broad strokes, various things. So, uh, the world is changing very rapidly. This decade, we had we, it all started with COVID 2019 and things went in a certain direction. And now we have various crises that have emerged in the world. We have Ukraine, we have the Middle East, there are flashpoints like Taiwan that exists and all. So, let's talk about these issues. First of all, let's begin with Pakistan, Iran. What happened there? So, uh, Pakistan, Iran, basically, uh, so as we know, there are uh, in that aspect region, mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, the presence of large number of, you know, that now the word terrorism is not used, but I refer to them as non-state actors. Yes. Because that, that in the world, you have to look at it that what we call uh, uh, criminal networks mm -hmm. combined with uh, armed terrorist groups are uh, governing large parts and areas of the world. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And it's a complex web of, we used to call Taliban as a state sponsor of terrorism. In the past. In the past. Mm -hmm. We still do. It's, it's not changed. Mm -hmm. But now Pakistan is facing, I'm just start from the Pakistan side and yes. then and Afghanistan side. Pakistan, oh. as we know, with TTP is facing, you know, so their their own uh, Frankenstein is coming back to, to bite them. Bite them. Yeah. As Hillary Clinton said that, you know, you don't, if you, if you have snakes in your backyard, don't think they're only uh, bite your neighbors. Neighbors. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, that is a that is that exists in that part of the world, hmm. and uh, like on the Afghan-Pakistan border, what on the Iran-Pakistan border, also the, on the uh, uh, Sistan-Baluchistan area, uh -huh. there are these different groups who are uh, uh, on both sides of the border, uh, targeting uh, uh, countries across the border. Okay, although. I'm just putting that that in reference so that you understand. Yeah, I see today that if you notice that there was uh, uh, this all was sparked by an attack on two attacks. One on Cameron, uh -huh. one on a local police or border security in Iran, right? In Iran, yes. Cameron was a big attack mm -hmm. and symbolic because it was on uh, on the date of the fourth anniversary of. Uh, Soleimani's assassination Soleimani by the Americans. Assassination. And a number of people died in this attack, right? Yes. So, yeah. it was a large number of people. Mm. And Soleimani himself, because he's like a national hero. Yes. And if you go back, why he was killed? He was killed during Trump Trump's time because a US soldier was killed in in that area on, mm. the, on the Iraq. Uh, uh, I don't remember exactly, but an Iran was attributed and that was a big thing. And he was killed in Iraq. He was killed in Iran, Iraq. Yeah. 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 In Baghdad. Yeah. On, uh, near Somewhere the airport. Near the airport, yeah. yeah. So, Soleimani, for people reference who didn't know, is basically under the IRGC, the Quds Force, which basically uh, is 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 a network of, he basically built a network of uh, different, what I call non-state actors, mm -hmm. with this Hezbollah, mm -hmm. the Houthis, the... Hamas. Hamas. Hamas actually for people's reference was actually interestingly formed by Iran <laughs> to mm -hmm. to to marginalize the PLA and Yasir Arafat. Mm, right. Mm. Okay. But then when you have these non-state actors, you know, they take they have a mind and organization of their own. Of so their own. They have sponsors, so it's a complex web. Yes. Okay. Also we people have to understand that normally there are twenty organizations, but people, especially I observed that in the AFPAC region. People collaborate, you know, so they're not defined lines. They they sometimes same people switch sides mm. or move from one organization to another. Mm -hmm. So these are large networks uh, which you'll call grey, ungoverned in in the normal sense of what we understand how governance and society operates. Mm -hmm. And uh, 
so in the specific case of iran and pakistan i think it was uh, if you look at it it it, it the tension has eased very quickly yes so my view on this is that they had to posture you know it was like okay they had to take action on both sides mm-hmm. with an understanding that it will not escalate beyond a point but they have to when they do that action you know so if you compare it to the surgical strike for instance yes okay, we uh, we had at that level at a political level try to outreach to pakistan and do all that when Pr- prime minister modi went to lahore and yes. i was actually described in your last interview yes. i was in kabul and i witnessed him leaving there mm-hmm. so we were trying to structurally on the top make a you know a change yes in you know uh, at at the top political leadership to you know do things to open up uh, different initiative to build confidence on both sides both sides yeah but uh, the way i attributed our the, so to put it in another way the iran and pakistan intelligence especially which is a, plays a major part in these kind of activities mm-hmm. are more well well coordinated than in, in our, the pakistan yeah in this scenario mm-hmm. secondly if you look at it why i gave the example of the cameron attack is mm-hmm. that 100 people died and yeah. one uh, i forgot his name one of the key actors who last i heard they were looking for him in western tehran mm-hmm. was an afghan okay who was released by taliban when they took over kabul in august 15 2021 so he was he incarcerated was, no he was not he is still alive okay he is still alive okay. so he was one of the actors or whatever uh, of of that attack okay you know implicated in that attack okay so that and he's from the iskp Mm. so iskp was blamed although again the larger narrative is the iranians blame israel and the us mm-hmm. you know because that's the bigger picture yes but the actor which were used was iskp which mm. operates in afghanistan what's iskp in uh, islamic state uh, uh, khurasan province khurasan province right so this is a this has originated around 2014 15 on the eastern interestingly on the eastern side of afghanistan mm. it has clear linkages logistically operationally with the isi okay Hmm. Okay. Okay. So see, it's a complex network. You have ISKP. Hmm. You do not want uh, again coming to this. You want certain things to happen where hmm. you have to do a major uh, 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 operation uh, operations, but then there is a strategy of containment. Yes. Okay. Hmm. So, but it is it is again it the, the thing doesn't go away. The the those operations. It's not that it's it's dusted and done because another thing in non-state actors. is that like we see in the case of hamas mm-hmm. that they will never end the war it's a never ending war because yes. you will keep taking territory but how do you ensure that you kill the last man in hamas so yeah. so th- these organization keep regenerating mm-hmm. and and uh, very sadly the hate which is built between these organization within these organizations because when you have family children dying that hate quotient actually rises it does hmm so you have another man standing you kill one guy there are four guys standing to build say so they their organization then it is linked to the financial uh, thing where you know the hamas leader lives in qatar qatar yes okay yeah so so you can you can guess you know what is going on of it course. is a very complex thing you know mm. the so coming back to iran pakistan it was according to me a coordinated attack because i and i i felt so hmm in case of uh, why i gave the example because afghanistan this gen was also implicated by iskp's mm-hmm. uh, presence in afghanistan but there was no there was no sort of uh, any uh, uh, sort of action between afghanistan and iran mm-hmm. but they coordinated mm-hmm. also to just add to this that after uh, october 7th mm-hmm. uh, last year on november 5th when the uh, unfortunate uh, attack of hamas in israel happened in yes. gaza mm-hmm. the uh, during the presence of a uh, major leader from afghanistan in iran mm-hmm. uh, the uh, uh, afghan intelligence uh, connected assets of mossad in afghanistan okay who were planning attacks in iran okay oh i see so there is there is an although we know that if you look at the larger picture as far as that region is concerned if you go on the 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 sex within the islamic thing mm-hmm. uh, iran is primarily shia shia yeah. afghanistan and uh, pakistan, pakistan are sunni. mainly sunni yes 
so that dimension is also there but uh -huh. i feel it is uh, uh, it is, and see the uh, you sort of understand that do you, like we say today biden mm -hmm. for instance and i'm just expanding that everyone is concerned about this region you know they so they want the conflict but they want it controlled yes so there is a clear strategy that no no action or this thing spreads the fire beyond the point mm, yes so so iran is equally concerned mm. okay mm -hmm. so if you look at biden statement or an iran statement they posture they are they have been 160 attacks by the uh, iranian proxies on us assets mm -hmm. or uh, bases or yeah. uh, i think after october 17 when the uh, uh, israeli started operations in gaza uh -huh. okay yes so uh, but still they do not want it to escalate beyond a certain point point because yeah. uh, the complexity is that when you look at i always observe it, the larger geopolitical iran mm. is not isolated today yeah it is closely uh, backed by china and russia two big nations yeah so one has the economic power one has the nuclear and military power yes okay yes so uh, the other thing is talking about the uh, so this is on iran pakistan mm -hmm. okay mm. uh, another thing which we see with the houthis yeah okay who are basically from yemen yemen the ansar allah faction Uh, yeah and uh, so there zaidi shias okay mm. uh, uh, a decent commentator was giving a very interesting fact yeah that they are using drones so normally uh, they have created a naval blockade yes which has never happened in history because you normally need large investments with, uh, naval assets operate is the most expensive in, uh, part of your security defense strategy the naval uh, dimension yeah, to 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 operate them on the high seas mm. so they have not operated blockaded by a deep sea navy yeah these are people on small boats with drones and yeah. small arms mm. going in this has never happened in history this is 21st century warfare now isn't yeah, it yeah because it is it is what it was said was that we, when you go in the technological aspect it is commoditization of technology yeah mm -hmm. so you are using smaller platforms uh you know gorilla groups mm -hmm. to you know to create a major impact because that blockade affects the whole world it does yeah that's a major choke so we point. have indian indian navy uh, uh, going in there protecting our because for us uh, that's a major route especially for our imports of energy and our exports to the west yes so that area is it's it's a it's an ongoing game mm. with this recent attack where the iranian drone down the usa says it's an iranian drone which followed into that uh, tower 22 camp in uh, uh, in jordan mm -hmm. where actually uh, so they have they have been similar attacks earlier but mm -hmm. they were all uh, not successful because mm -hmm. they were countered successfully by the us this time what is being said in the media is that there was a confusion because they had an incoming drone to the camp and this drone followed now whether it was coincident <laughs> or met okay so mm -hmm. so that's what happened mm -hmm. and we had three us uh, soldiers die so okay. the us domestically reacts you know when their proxies dying and all they don't care but yeah, their own no, people die domestic yeah. see in the us most of people are not uh, very uh, aware or educated on uh, the world affairs yeah the average american is not they don't concern mainly actually yeah yeah so uh, so that part of the us the us geopolitics is driven by uh, the industrial uh, the state department the mm. indus cia the industrial military complex yeah okay uh, which because you, as we know all know that washington uh, the way politics works there is these corporations you know log lobbying is legal in the us it is so the influence these corporations large corporations have on policy making mm. is huge yes. huge mm -hmm. yeah. so uh, i would want to step back a little on you know you i saw on your thing you were starting uh, things on geopolitics yeah yeah so you know geopolitics has mm. become the buzzword because mm. you know when you have all this happening everyone is concerned how does it affect me okay. yes we saw ukraine happening we saw mm. uh, food prices and fuel prices rise that's right but yeah. now interestingly it's been covered but i don't see talk about it mm -hmm. now that that is normalized so ukraine is also exporting grain out of things so those sort of uh, 
uh, issues have been handled. They have been handled, yes. Yes. Yeah. So, the major fundamental issue today in the world is that, I my view of the world is that you have two dimensions of this, uh, so you uh, of of these competition clash, etc. Right? Mm -hmm. So if you if, the broad thing you say is U.S. China is the biggest, uh, you know, uh, biggest rivalry geopolitical uh, issue. Mm -hmm. But the reasons for that have to be examined. Yes. So I see that if you look at the world history quickly, right? Mm -hmm. We went through uh, colonialism. Yes. Which was about four five hundred years. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Which was followed by, uh, which ended with the Second World War. Yes. Then in the seventies to the nineties, we had the Cold War. That's right. Okay. Which was the bigger, uh, you know, geopolitical. Plays, right? Yes. Uh, then we went into the 90s. Asia started rising, mm -hmm. and that's why I see that Asians. Uh, this, is, this is now a civilizational clash. Yeah. So Asians in Asia, as we know, the world major economy and population is in Asia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay? We know that uh, West is declining uh, in population. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, the West, the major factor in the West, around which which we'll call the West, is it was earlier the Brits during the colonial era, uh, colonial era, and then it was switched after the World War to the U.S. That's right. Okay, U.S. controlled the world. Uh, uh, we know the Bretton Woods Agreement happened. Forty-four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Forty-five. The CIA was formed. Yep. Okay. And then in seventy-four, uh, Nixon. Uh, uh, delinked, delinked the gold and uh, the backing of gold the dollar. So mm. we went to a, a U.S. dollar paper note which mm. said, which says in God we trust. Okay? <laughs> yeah. We all trust God. Mm. Uh, but that became the reserve currency of the world. Yes. Okay. Because of the uh, which we call petro dollars also because yes. of these uh, the uh, agreement between King Faisal and uh, the U.S. U.S. Mm. President, uh, I think it was Roosevelt. Or, I don't remember. U.S. President and uh, the Saudi Saudis. Saudis. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, now what is happening is on the economic side. Mm. So with climate change mm. and uh, the focus of the world to to be to head towards carbon neutrality and change because the major major pollutant cause of pollution is fuel, fossil fuel. Fossil fuels. So we are moving towards renewable energy, solar, nuclear energy as, you know. So the Saudis are also concerned that the lesser dependence on fossil fuels hmm. will impact them. It will impact them, yes. And we see the Saudis also liberalizing and looking at other ways of, uh, you know, uh, meeting, uh, not being a oil major oil exporting country and mm -hmm. developing other areas yeah. to to sustain uh, their economy yes. and also liberalizing the society the society because yeah. uh, that because it's 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 also it's interrelated it's not only their society if you want tourism to come then tourists will not come in a you know people want yeah all, all whatever they are accustomed to yeah yeah what they go for all yeah. the rest of the world mm -hmm. so, and uh, so i think that is playing out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so when we come now, there are two uh, two important issues. Is one is the clash of civilization. Yes. Then there are uh, as per the OECD, uh, sixty odd fra it's called fr fragile contexts in the world, mm -hmm. which are basically fault lines. You know, like you say, the Durand line is a fault line. Mm -hmm. The the Gaza is was sort of a localized fault line. Yeah. But when interna when it is internationalized, mm -hmm. and this is a classic example because it was not just between the Hamas and and Israel, mm -hmm. it has got internationalized because the U.S. had to step in because Israel and U.S. you know mm -hmm. uh, they they call Israel the uh, uh, the U.S. aircraft carrier on land <laughs> in the region. In the region, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
so they are they are even more closely joined at the hip than mm-hmm. the five eyes we recently had five eyes came a lot in the media oh, they did. yeah the trudeau thing and all that yeah so people were asked in mm. this uh, one of the recent talks that mm. you know is because israel is not part of the five eyes it's not but then intelligence uh, former intelligence uh, which, uh, officer said very clearly that mm. we are more aligned with them because in terms of not only uh, sharing intelligence but even conducting joint operations mm-hmm. so it is very critical for the us in their geo strategy and mm-hmm. geopolitics they don't have an option to although they are under pressure because of the casualties and you know the yeah. suffering mm-hmm. to 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 f- try to find a early solution yeah but i think uh, that interplay with netanyahu's uh, you know local domestics mm-hmm. and politics mm-hmm. uh, uh you know we look at that and then the regional politics mm. because you see you saw geopolitically certain uh, major uh, uh events take place with the I2U2 agreement with Israel yes. reaching out to the Arabs yeah which all meant that you were basically uh decoupling the Palestinian because Arabs traditionally uh, stood uh, uh you know stood along in solidarity, solidarity with the with the Palestinians. Palestinians yeah okay but there was a delinking of the mm. palestinian issue from uh from uh, this and from the uh, with the arabs mm-hmm. with israel yeah that's right yeah uh we saw the saudi and israelis come together mm-hmm. you know at the best in uh engineered by the us the abraham accords yeah mm-hmm. and then we saw china mm-hmm. because you see the us china rivalry china also wants to maintain its influence so then iran saw the yeah iran <laughs> saudi yeah now this uh, particular starting with the uh, uh, gaza mm-hmm. uh, uh, conflict this is sort of unreal you know unraveling all these in contacts we see recently now the us has had to react on these uh recent uh, which i described the attack in jordan jordan right okay and now the arabs have had to uh, you know go in with the us mm-hmm. then also putin flew in as we recently know with four uh, big uh, aircraft guard by four men into uae mm-hmm. and he went on to saudi arabia yes okay mm-hmm. uh with with india's importing of few see this is all related india's importing of fuel mm-hmm. which we want to we would love to pay them in rupees yes yes of course but mm. when you have a large deficit what will they do with the rupees that's right yeah so now then india had a a a treaty with uh, uh the exchange no oh. with a, with ad because see uh-huh. that becomes you need a you need to settle that currency so you need an outlet to uh, convert it to a currency which is usable uh-huh. since we don't our we all know about our uh, strained relation with china uh uh-huh. So, so we can't use the yuan you know yeah if we didn't have that that was the ideal thing right ideally yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so now we use ad as a thing mm. as the intermediate currency well, it's great for the uae yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uae has also said that they will go and uh, start dealing with ad they mm. have reached out to 15 countries mm, okay 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 now all this is happening is affecting the dependency and trading of using the us dollar us dollar for mm-hmm. what they call settlement there are two roles the us dollar plays mm-hmm. one is for trade settlements yeah other is reserve currencies of banks mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. now this is also use, uh, 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 reducing the need of the us dollar as a settlement currency mm-hmm. now with uae india saying we will use the rupee to trade mm-hmm. to settle external trade mm-hmm. uae is also saying that this is only at the behest of China and Ru- Russia Russia yeah supporting that move yes yes mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and then we see in the BRICS uh, uh, interestingly uh, Iran joined yes as BRICS plus Egypt Ethiopia UAE? yeah yeah okay Saudi and Saudi yeah even the UAE yeah so yeah. UAE Iran Saudi Ethiopia uh, Egypt Egypt yeah. now why ethiopia ethiopia because of the strategic location yeah okay. africa yeah ua uh, Sa- uh, saudi because 
large oil exporter mm-hmm. russia large oil energy exporter china is already part so india and china are the major consumer consumers that's right so what an iranian uh, uh, senior uh, uh, for i think the foreign minister mm-hmm. made a remark that if we have so we have two uh, uh, like of the top uh, nuclear arsenal we have the two of the top countries mm-hmm. with nuclear arsenal which mm-hmm. is china and russia mm-hmm. in bricks yeah uh, we have roughly f- 50% or more of the world's uh, with brick plus it goes higher but mm-hmm. i don't know the exact number but it's i think 50 or 75% of the world gdp mm-hmm. yeah because bricks together mm-hmm. it, the gdp of bricks together is higher than g7 g7 right okay yeah and it has 40 40% of the world's population the original five member bricks yeah yeah so with this you'll have especially for energy mm-hmm. because that's energy is very important for any economy any country yes uh, the you'll have the uh, majority of the uh, oil uh, producing and exporting countries you will cover uh, c- uh, the countries so what you need to cover key elements the production hmm. the transportation and yeah. the consumption consumption yeah so you become self sustaining yeah so bricks essentially is becoming that now right yeah hmm. the only issues with bricks are uh, is that how do you find an alternate one of the fundamental issues uh-huh. uh, is how do you find an alternate see uh, money is like uh, no one rare says is a myth mm mm-hmm. money is based on trust you know it's based on trust you cannot eat it you cannot wear it you cannot this thing mm. so it is not usable by itself yeah it's a means to exchange or a mean right yeah so it is based on trust mm-hmm. you accept something from me because you accept it's based on trust and your perception of value mm-hmm. now the only uh, alternate which is emerging mm-hmm. from this is based on gold yeah back currency mm-hmm. uh operated by a blockchain because see if you have gold then and you don't have any specific currency say dollar was one so you cannot replace it by yuan because the lack of trust yeah and the opaque chinese you know system. us is still transparent to large extent yeah so now it is it is gold backed uh gold it's it's a commodity backed mm-hmm. a basket but, of commodities uh, commodities mm-hmm. but the predominant commodity will be gold gold yeah and interestingly a couple of years back the bis allowed gold to be a tier 1 asset okay. in banks uh uh-huh. so tier 1 capital basically means how do you rate a bank's asset base in terms of you know their asset and liability mm-hmm. so classifying gold as a tier 1 asset earlier it was only the us dollar and treasuries were considered tier 1 in I see, I see. international banking system okay gold has been classified as the tier 1 asset all right so commodity backed uh, currencies mm-hmm. a basket of currencies mm-hmm. it mean predominantly gold will uh, you know feature in that mm-hmm. based on a uh, uh, immutable uh, operating system based mm-hmm. on blockchain blockchain so okay. that no single country controls uh the system yeah it's based on rules that's it right yeah and uh, so i think these are the uh, broad trends which we are moving on mm-hmm. and uh, like i said it's not going to happen tomorrow yeah but also you look at it, these wars and this acceleration you know focuses so that decoupling you know when you you were called calling about uh, after pandemic you uh-huh. know when we got into supply chain issues yes. you know which which is the starting of the phase of what i call deglobalization mm-hmm. the f- we knew uh, we knew what globalization did yeah under wto and the world trade mm-hmm. now people uh, concern was not e- focused just on economic they were concerned about vulnerabilities and uh, security yeah and supply chain uh, issues mm-hmm. so there was what we call uh, onshoring friend shoring near shoring mm-hmm. okay when mm-hmm. we talked about china not being you know the vulnerabilities with consumers of chinese products yeah and during pandemic because china stopped so yeah you know how do you how do you sustain yourself so right. we talked about you know ensuring that we have secure supply chains mm-hmm. and production bases and transport networks mm-hmm. so that is also another trend 
which is okay. so so and also you know we are basically going on uh, a fragmented uh, world okay which is broadly based on the civilizational clash mm-hmm. the fragment context of local clashes like amas mm-hmm. it's an interplay of all this mm-hmm. okay and it is basically on the fundamental on issues which face the world are uh, and any country is economics politics so societal mm-hmm. climate mm-hmm. and last which has been added 2 years ago is human okay see that lowest denominator is in the larger geopolitical picture never never really considered right yeah hmm but this i don't see see what they what is being said and what you see happening is these are more civilization clashes than hmm. than ideological clashes yes so when you saw saw the uh, 70s mm-hmm. uh, to 70s to 90s the cold war was an ideological clash it was completely ideological okay yes this part of the world the us in uh, the middle east and you know uh, and central asia us basically uh, promoted uh, to counter communism communist ideology promoted uh, uh, a radical form of islam uh-huh. okay which mm. was funded by saudis mm. now that is with you see the saudis have recently allowed the, uh, even the sale of alcohol yes they have yeah okay mm. so they are moving to a more uh, liberal uh, uh, liberal social norms yes right mm mm-hmm. so it is an interplay you know you you're going from very radical uh, uh, social norms mm-hmm. to liberal norms yes okay but civilizationally the if you like i described about colonial you see civilizationally we indians or the chinese or even the russians mm-hmm. are different in our value systems because see one of the things is everyone every nation every country has core identity yeah okay yeah to which they relate yes okay i am not going to get into you know devils into indian politics but yeah. we saw that happening with the it's not it's not just a, a, a opening of a temple mm-hmm. it's a it's it's it, it has a larger uh, ramifications of oh, yeah. of reestablishing the civilizational identity and the of india yes okay yeah yeah it has yeah. okay mm-hmm. no people relate to that mm. okay the chinese civilizational identity the russian the indian the iranian these are major civil- yeah. are very distinct from the western civilization absolutely very distinct but if you look at the western right it's mainly it was european because mm. the major part of the us immigrants were european white european group. yeah absolutely and we know about the anglo saxon mm. that's the dominant group within them yeah okay so they have managed to be a hegemon mm. okay yeah 500 so, years roughly so yeah so uk and then the us mm. and then after the uh, collapse of soviet union us for a brief while became a unipo- it became a unipolar world it was a monopolar world unipolar yeah. world yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but that started the uh, don't do me the movement to a what we call a multipolar world yeah mm-hmm. so these actions are actually causing shifts but it has impact on on all uh, uh, all dimensions mm-hmm. you know it's not just a security issue you can so it causes economic issues it's okay? all interrelated it's all interrelated yeah so uh, uh, and then you, the disruption other disruption you're seeing mm-hmm. besides the geopolitical thing mm-hmm. is uh, so geoeconomics has become very important yeah okay mm-hmm. uh because like the americans used sanctions as a it's basically a geoeconomic tool it is okay or the the acts the major geopolitical issues which are sort of related to geoeconomics is the is the chips act and the yeah. inflation uh, uh inflation reduction act mm-hmm. okay so it is an interplay of all this mm-hmm. but the trend i'm observing is that as bricks because most of the people who lived under us hegemony uh had you know were constrained to follow a certain line because yeah. of 
the US pressure yeah. and did not have options. Yes. So now their option is the other axis, which I called the Russia Iran China axis. Mm -hmm. India is still in between the two axes. Mm -hmm. Yes, India is in kind of in between. Yeah, so yeah. we call ourselves autonomous. Yeah. But it's a delicate balancing act. It's a tightrope walk. Yeah. Yeah. So like we are having in Goa the uh, the energy uh, conference mm -hmm. next week. Okay. Or later this week, mm -hmm. uh, where the uh, Russians are coming in, major energy con producing countries are coming in. Because energy in, for Indian context is very important. It is. Yeah. Because we import, I think, eighty percent of our. Mm -hmm. uh, so it it is very it is very important. Mm -hmm. So energy, uh, climate change. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then on the technological side, we see AI. Yes. Coming in. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, which there are recent, of late been concerns of how do you control it? How do you uh, you know control basically the misuse of AI? Yes. Also in technology with the chips acts and all, there has been now. So earlier you had global standards on technology and everyone shared it. Now that also is, you know, getting sort of divided. Yes. Because everyone wants to, you know, control. So there's competition mm. there. Mm. Uh, so I, I, I see that, you know, the, it's an uncertain disruptive world. It is very uncertain. Yes. Right now. So, mm. uh, it's anybody's prediction where mm. it goes, but yeah. it, these are frankly very concerning, stressful times. Right. So we have something called SARC, right? SARC is is kind of a defunct organization because of the India Pakistan yeah, thing. So yeah. So yeah, because SARC, uh, the uh, India number one and Pakistan number two in terms of population and size. Yeah. Are the two largest players? You have of course the smaller countries like mm. Sri Lanka. Bhutan, hmm. uh, Nepal, Maldives, Nepal, Bangladesh, yeah, uh, uh, and of course Afghanistan. Afghanistan is it part of SARC? Yeah? Yes, it is. Okay, mm. so India made that move of adding Afghanistan. Okay, that's SARC. a good move. Yeah. But because of the India-Pakistan thing, SARC is kind of defunct, right? Doesn't function. Defunct because you know the major, uh, uh, so major initiatives under SARC mm -hmm. are basically economic and trade. Mm, yes. Yeah. So if there's a disruption of economic and trade, then it doesn't make uh, you know. Trade and transportation. Now, extrapolating okay. that to BRICS, we have India and China that don't get along together. So, can BRICS work? I think um, uh, it. See, it's not only can BRICS work. Mm -hmm. Like I said earlier, India is playing a balancing act. It is, yeah. Between so, US. Mm -hmm. So, if you look at the US hegemony and the US dollar. Yeah. So, US will naturally. So, interestingly, we had France mm -hmm. coming to India recently. Yes, yes, yes. We have had old association law. Yes. And France uh, uh, indicated its uh, interest in joining BRICS, but Russia stood in between. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, mm. so it's very interesting. It's very complex. So, mm. how do you progress? It's not that you can decide. So, it's not only the China factor. Mm. The Russia factor is also there. Not only Russia, the US factor. The US factor. How do we balance, mm. you know, mm -hmm. our relationship with pressures from the US mm -hmm. and move further on the brick side mm. even if you for a moment keep the china india issues aside mm. that with russia being in the picture and all mm. can be to some extent uh, you know surmounted mm -hmm. but uh, it's more that how do we balance being part of brics because we are being part of brics see you have to understand iran russia and china okay mm -hmm. are all in different measures, sanctioned countries. Absolutely. Right? You all three, yes. India is not. India is not. Okay. Yeah. Mm. But uh, uh, US needs India to counter China. That's the only utility that India okay. possesses yeah. from their perspective. And, uh, you know, it's anybody's guess. I th don't think China, uh, China, they have their issues, but US is portraying China as an expansionist mm -hmm. in the region. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure how far that is true. Okay. Although they have the BRI and, you know, yeah. you've seen what has happened in, in Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. other countries. Yes. CPEC, uh -huh. in Pakistan. That is, uh, and when we see Afghanistan classically, that uh, I recently heard that the uh, uh, Chinese president there mm -hmm. told at a senior level meeting that, you know, he's very concerned that, you know, they should get the prominent uh, uh be the prominent player in the region mm -hmm. after the leaving of the US. Okay. But the US has not really left. The US hasn't really left, left is it? 
So US is giving 40 to 80 million dollars a week. A week. Okay. Stipend. Yeah. So, mm. so US is not really left. It is China is not. China is there is no free meals in China. So, uh, yeah. Uh, so it, it is an inter, you know it's a very complex game. So Sark is you know we have BIMSTEC. Yeah. You know, we are trying to do some alignments, mm. uh, you know. External to SARC. Yeah, yeah. so out of SARC. Mm. But uh, I don't think it is working. And uh, It's not working. SARC is not working. No, one's, no then, one cares about SARC anymore. And also you have to see uh, the the presence of China like we saw in Maldives. Uh -huh. Maldives is also part of SARC. Yes. It's very simple. That, that presence of China, we see it in Sri Lanka, we see it in Myanmar. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So when we are developing all this in China is countering us, mm -hmm. CPEC is the classic land. CPEC, yeah. In Pakistan. Yes. And in Nepal. Mm -hmm. We're seeing the rivalry of India, US and... Uh, three and, three yeah. big powers, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, this geopolitics is also taking over the, uh, you know... Local issues. Yeah. That's, our, you know, so th that's a regional... Uh, grouping. Uh, grouping, right? Yeah. But that's what I said earlier, the mm -hmm. geo... It's an interplay within the local grouping and what the big ones. So, yeah. China is naturally trying to... Uh, so to lack of good was submerge SARC because mm. if if they are more uh, successful at pushing their agenda, mm -hmm. you know, and providing connectivity mm. on a larger footprint, mm -hmm. so the SARC uh, and with the difference between India Pakistan being the fundamental reason for the for the uh, lack of movement on SARC. Yeah. You no, know, so that and the counter of China in the region. Mm -hmm. Is both, uh, you know, has implications for SARC. So I mm. don't see SARC as, you know, really mm. viable. It, no, it's not right till India and Pakistan. So there is another. Mm. Okay, now talking about India and Pakistan. Mm. So one school of thought is we saw Nawaz Sharif, Prime Minister Modi, uh, you know, making that bold attempt. Yes. Because uh, you know, hats off to him. I saw this personally. Mm. So we saw him come in Kabul with all the security detail and everything. Mm -hmm. And he flew to Pakistan, and mm. we know the threat in Afghanistan is not from from Afghanistan. It comes from Pakistan. across, yeah. which we call a common friend or mm. common <laughs> whatever. Yeah. So uh, common border. Uh, mm. But he f he took that bold step of flying into Pakistan mm. and flew in without security from the airport in mm. a helicopter with Nawaz Sharif mm. to his farm, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And with probably one. PSO or something without mm. his usual security detail. Mm -hmm. Now that was a bold step. Yes. But Nawaz Sharif could not de deliver because of the forge. The forge, yeah. Not being in the picture. Right? Mm. So we have these Pakistani analysts who come and say, you know, you did not. First they say, don't interfere in our affairs. Okay. So they, you know, they have the cake and eat it too. So they say, don't interfere in our affairs. Then they also give this logic that because you didn't take forge, that's why Nawaz Sharif could not deliver. Mm, okay. Now, are we supposed to run your country? <laughs> if we do, then you say you are meddling. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So, yeah. you know, so they, they are. So, Pakistan, what I see going forward, the US-China, uh, we have an election coming up on 8th of February. In uh, Pakistan? Yes. Well, hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. uh, we've seen the recent visit of Asir Munir to hmm. Washington. To, yeah. Yeah. So if, and we see where, where we know where Imran Khan is, yes. who's sort of the popular leader, but he's been highly constrained because of making a, 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 a bold, but a very risky move of trying to align himself with Putin yeah. when he fell off. Mm -hmm. And then blaming, continuing to blame the US. For this. So the US, you see, Pakistan is also a dichotomy. If you study Pakistan, the leaders are in bed with the West mm -hmm. and now with China. Mm -hmm. Okay. But the public, which is fundamentalist, yeah. most of them are, you know, fed that, are yeah. anti US. Yes. So they, yes. You know, it's very strange. Uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. It's always been the case. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the larger move is to a control. So the geopolitics, the US to counter China, one school of thought is, which is being propagated, is that. To start, they want India to ascend. Mm -hmm. So they want, in order to India's ascension to happen and to counter China, they have to broker some deal between Pakistan and India. Basically, more, more because you know there are three T's: uh, trade, terrorism, uh, and transport. Mm -hmm. those, okay? Yeah. So basically, we'll have to find a solution on the terrorism and Kashmir issue. Mm -hmm. 
in order to increase trade and transport transport between india and afghanistan, afghanistan and central, central asia. asia yeah absolutely so that is the only counter hmm well that's so, the only thing they can offer india so logically yeah. that is the counter now yeah. how uh, how pakistan uh, uh, forge presume it's a feudal society mm -hmm. you know their power structures are very distinct from in india yeah democracy has never really uh, found its feet yeah and i have another theory that india's so if you increase so at the people to people we don't have a problem mm -hmm. okay despite the horrors of partition, partition. Uh, my uh, father and grandfather came from lahore I see. My father and mother were in their teens when they, in 47, when they moved across. I see. So they've seen all that. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. But they never gave us stories to hate uh -huh. Pakistan. We okay. never had that. Right? Mm -hmm. They said they went through things and they got up and they still, you know, that's why I say civilization. Civilizationally, we are connected. Yeah. Culturally, civilization and our identity, language, uh -huh. food, culture is the same. Is the same. Yeah. So you have commonality on that. Yeah. Pakistan formed on basis of religion. Yeah. Had to adopt and to survive as a separate nation. Mm -hmm. Had to f adopt an anti-India doctrine. Yes. So like Alice well said, they always told their population because the British left one third of the undivided India's army in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And also one more thing they left, the, the intelligence records for the whole region were in Rawalpindi. Oh, I see. Okay. Okay. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, there, the to sustain that economy, the the army, mm -hmm. the third army, you know, they had they needed resources, mm. and th then that solidified as their power structure uh, solidified. Now they are facing this problem with their economic issues. You know, uh, uh, they are reaching a sort of a a major uh, that. This will not be business as usual. Uh -huh. On their domestic uh, politics, I mean, economic, basically, mainly the economic issue. Mm. Because no one is ready to cut them checks anymore. Mm -hmm. okay. So, how this plays out is the only uh, struck means major transformational change can be, uh, you know, peace with India. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Now, how China reacts to that is anybody's guess. Okay. Mm. Although China's strategically wouldn't should not have a problem with that because if peace returns they frankly have not much to use to lose the question is what sort of peace can there be between so India peace and is our contextual point is mm. kashmir kashmir right so kashmir see terrorism is mm. because of kashmir yeah of course you have other bombay you had other mm. attacks mm. Which, were, uh, which were done mm. but predominantly for india's uh, security establishment is the terrorism in Kashmir, the others we can manage. But even if we reintegrate the rest of Kashmir with India, there's still going to be the Khyber Pakhtunkhwa issue, there's going to be Balochistan, there's going to be restive populations there. No, so, no, so that's what I'm saying. Transform change means if you if you have peace on one border mm -hmm. and you start more trade mm -hmm. and there is economic development, mm -hmm. it will naturally have a positive impact mm -hmm. on the region. Mm -hmm. Of course, it will not solve the... Uh, yeah, that's another thing. So there is this maps which oh yeah, yeah the maps <laughs> civilizationally to redraw maps mm -hmm. in the whole region yeah. starting from uh, Pakistan going up to Iraq and mm -hmm. uh, Kurdistan and yeah, yeah. Turkey and Saudi so that is uh, there is also that thinking in America mm -hmm. of redraw maps mm -hmm. maybe that will that will start that process. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, because mm. as Pakistani, it 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 has different uh, impacts. So, as trade develops in India, that the power structures, the justification of the power structures within Pakistan, will change dramatically. Evaporate essentially, whatever. Yeah. Yeah, because the forge no longer say we have a threat from India. Mm. Say, for instance, mm -hmm. ideally. Mm. Okay. Then their own sustenance and uh, allocation of resources will be an issue. Mm, yes. Okay, so, if investment in trade rises in Pakistan mm. and trade with peace with India happens, it will change the whole dimension mm. in, in a lot of ways. Mm. So, and of course, you mentioned aspect. So, I see right now it's drawn, but you know, there is anybody's guess of how that, you know, with TTP operating on that side and yes. the, uh, Taliban clearly asserting itself. Mm -hmm. You know how that progresses. Mm. 
so that is another dimension so it's it's pakistan as an issue primarily economic right now but fundamentally all issues on uh, uh, conflicts are on the east and the west the western side is the durand line the eastern yeah. side is the loc yeah so both sides we see how that that geographic uh, element mm-hmm. economic element political element interplay and taken with the local and domestic politics within and power uh, power structures within uh, within pakistan within pakistan another factor that's not very far away is turkey i mean it plays a significant role in the middle east in northern africa in in europe in nato as well how do you, what what role do you see turkey playing see turkey is sandwiched so they have their own problems between the west and the east, east. <laughs> so and it's not a energy surplus country it's not that. yeah so you know it's more a trading country so it sits on an important uh, rent seeking uh, country rent yeah. seeking yeah so it it sits on an important trade route between yeah. russia and this thing yeah so beyond that i think the relevance is 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 limited mm mm-hmm. i don't see turkey uh, uh, because it it always has to keep this rising itself because see also another dimension in the muslim world mm. islamic world mm. after ziya ul haq and yeah. the and the russian uh, con- it's us proxy conflict in afghanistan afghanistan yes ziya ul haq because he was empowered with uh, you know security arms and was closely got backed by the us mm-hmm. uh, started thinking that he can expand his influence over the rest of uh, the middle east mm-hmm. because the the realistic if you look at the middle east yeah, there are sm- much smaller populations yes and their local populations are very small yes absolutely all those nations so if you look at it so to ensure their own security and they have large resources mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. So, okay so but they don't have the capacity because of small populations to secure themselves beyond the point mm-hmm. and they have been dependent on pakistan mm. if you see rail sharif form that islamic army mm. he still sits in in saudi why do it because mm. they were pakistani even in the saudi air force they were pakistani uh, pilots mm. so the middle east always had had this dimension that because of small the local populations being small mm-hmm. they are limited have limitations in terms of uh, developing their uh, own uh, security uh, forces mm-hmm. okay so that turkey because large population uh, iraq iran the larger population mm-hmm. in the region mm-hmm. uh, and pakistan mm-hmm. these are the larger population yes the rest are not that large mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. and then you have of course egypt on the north north african north side Africa. egypt and libya yeah the rest are small uae uh, oman bahrain qatar small populations even saudi for that yeah. matter okay yeah. so these are very small populations mm-hmm. they are resource rich but with small population that small population is a limitation of them developing that's why uh, they are dependent on other countries both and secondly pakistan is the only nuclear country in that region yeah okay mm-hmm. east of india mm-hmm. west of india sorry west of india mm. uh, so that also is another factor mm-hmm. that you know although this uh, saudis and uh, the uae have been in discussions with the us to get their own nuclear uh, uh, capabilities i see mm. because no threat from iran from iran iran that's right do you think iran is a shadow or hidden nuclear power by now it's anybody yes yeah so they, i i i heard recently on podcast that mm. they have see in iran interestingly mm-hmm. i have been to iran uh, a few times mm-hmm. they have good uh, uh, because they were had to be self sustained because of blockages and uh, sanctions 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 mm-hmm. limitations of sanctions yeah they have indigenously developed they are very good in technology and developed their their educational institutions are good they have look at the drones yes okay yes. they gave drones to russia shahed two drones yeah yeah which is uh, what it's a knock off of the american uh, reaper reaper or something they yeah. got one of those right because yeah. it crashed there yeah. yeah so they have basically in certain areas built inherent strengths mm. because of circumstances mm. 
and being self sufficient in certain areas very resourceful actually yeah, yeah. so there is also on hypersonic missiles mm, okay so iran is also working on that so mm. the only thing is that they don't have uh, means they have or don't have is anybody's guess it's yeah enough uh, nuclear fissile material yeah yeah because uh, the the nuclear agreement with, with the us and, the, and iran was supposed to cap the iranian nuclear program yeah. but trump walked out of that unilaterally and since then the iranians have been doing something or other see this also these all things also bring in the credibility of the us on on adhering to its commitments yes absolutely so that's why the world this all the more reason that if you see all these countries mm. they are not very uh, uh, you know us has its its sort of uh, prominence dominance in the world yeah but lacks clearly on their dependency yeah so if you know how reliable they are as mm-hmm. as strategic partners we yeah. saw what happened in afghanistan uh uh-huh. they follow their own interests so yeah. their lack of commitment uh, to uh, their partners is very suspect yeah they they there, there's a trust trust issue trust deficit when yeah. it comes to the us yeah. you can't trust them <laughs> yeah because they're like i said as a dominant power mm. the uh, their trajectory or their whole uh, way of dealing in the world is mm. on their terms yes firstly yeah and then or more often than not they have not stood up to their commitments yes so it's this is the class example mm. iran went into and we had the p5 and other countries and what yeah and they were international players mm. so we had but then they simply walked out of it just to one change of president that's it <laughs> so that yeah. that basically see the rest of the world is cannot you know they become very vulnerable mm. if they are dependent on such a partner you know capricious partner yeah yeah so mm. that is another issue right let's talk about uh, two more things one is ukraine one is taiwan so how do you see ukraine going the everyone everyone was saying since 2022 that russia is losing well we still have the war going on how do you see this war going so we we clearly saw the us us uh, sort of support for the war was mm. already declining even before the gaza yeah event happened yeah because of us politics mm-hmm. you know the republicans and most some of the democrats were also not really keen to keep continuing to support mm-hmm. because they were not seeing a decisive uh, you know decisive outcome mm-hmm. okay because yeah. it would how long it would go on and uh, europe europe which is suffering had uh, which is now started to revive slowly mm-hmm. um we saw germany and france are basically the countries after brexit who matter in europe yes so they they were seeing not only the impact on their economies because of energy and other issues mm-hmm. uh but also of uh pitching in for you know resources and equipment um equipment for the war mm-hmm. so us is now sort of you know uh got diverted and after hamas thing happened most of their attention today is middle east middle east yeah so they have i think lost uh, focus and attention it mm. continue to simmer and then also you have to understand uh what is the end game yeah. please understand yeah uh, putin says it's protecting his side and there also is another thing where you read about that is another civilizational or look thing it is between the churches of which is never talked about it's not only language it is between the church, orthodox, orthodox church, church mm. and the ukrainian unite church mm. okay okay so, that's an interesting angle yeah, to this yeah see that local dimension of mm. where the where the clash was which is ethnic mm. so a lot of people say now which is to some extent i'm not saying it's happening in india but is portrayed as happening is that local politics will be based on ethnic division mm-hmm. and larger geopolitics is based on class of civilization mm. right so ukraine now is on the as far as the military aspect is concerned it is sort of a war of attrition and stalemate you know you, putin has essentially got what he wanted mm. okay mm-hmm. and i think europe is is clear that uh, that you cannot tell them that you know you, you are next <laughs> so that's why Finland and uh, yeah Sweden joined. Sweden yeah. yeah. Mm. Joined they were neutral all along. They are part of NATO now. Yeah. Right. Mm. So it is it is the same thing. Mm. So you know these are different dimensions of of 
perceive threats and how do you perceive it? Mm-hmm. Take the case of India, China, just mm-hmm. to come in the case. I had met a senior communist uh, party uh, guy long back mm-hmm. in Delhi on the security conference. This is much before 2017. Okay. So in in our conversation, you know, he he came to a very important point of the issue with India, mm-hmm. and he said our big basic issue is your relationship with the U.S. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. So my response was that we are not U.S. allies. Yeah. Okay. And yeah. his his response to that was that the U.S. is wo- wooing you, and what if they succeed? Mm-hmm. Okay. So interesting, China's issue with India is not India. Mm-hmm. It's the U.S. He, no, is India's relationship. With the US, with the US. Now, where mm. that goes, mm. okay, okay, so that is that is their concern. Okay, so that's their their concern, their yeah. their perspective. So I right. think Ukraine, uh, Taiwan, uh, I think we uh, we recently had elections and yeah. in Taiwan. So, like in Bangladesh, mm-hmm. on that, see, f- strategically for the US, we seeing what is happening in the Chips Act. They are. You know, building facilities. I don't know how far they'll be successful in Arizona. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. But that also says that will uh, reduce the relevance of Taiwan to to the US. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so that is a play on the defense side, and you know there is some posturing. I don't see uh, uh, much happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I don't see it. You don't see Taiwan uh, being invaded anytime soon. No. Yeah. Also, see one of Again, I'm not pro-China, but I'm mm-hmm. just saying what yeah. the justification mm-hmm. when COVID, uh, this, all these things. Taiwan was a was a uh, was a previous ongoing thing. Yeah. So you see what happened in Hong Kong. Mm-hmm. Taiwan was already ongoing then. Yes. And then what happened in with India and Galwan? Mm-hmm. This had the onset of pandemic. Yeah. So the Chinese justification is that we were trying to. Basically, guard our vulnerabilities. Okay. Where we felt vulnerable, it's not expansionist like the U.S. says. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there, it's like okay, the U.S. comes in, and we saw Nancy Pelosi go there and <laughs> all that. Yes, know, so yes. That is all creating, you know, sort of more, uh, uh, you know, sort of events which create, you know, uh, bit of hype or noise and hype. Mm, right? Yeah. Right. But beyond that, I do, I don't think because also China is is aware that they I don't think the U.S. is right now at a position to challenge what the existing uh, sort of uh, what is prevailing existing there uh-huh. of any way go in and change that. So mm. so I don't think Taiwan uh, uh, is and I think Xi Jinping has stated that timeline for them is not now. Okay, they want an eventual peaceful uh, reunification. Yeah, yeah, peaceful. He emphasizes the word pe- word peaceful. Uh, what do you think the role that North Korea plays is in all this? So, like I said, f- fragility and hmm. fault lines. Fault lines, yeah. So fault lines are playing up, like in North Korea. Mm-hmm. Fault lines are playing up even in Latin America. All right, in Latin Africa, America. Mm-hmm. we saw what happened between Venezuela and yeah. Uh, Guyana, right? Yeah. Yes. When we called the president of Guyana and we said it, there's a there's a lot of Indian diaspora there, and we said that we will go and invest in oil in that. Mm. You know, so you have to correlate that. I yes. I WhatsApp you when it happened. Mm, yeah. Right. So I think that is see part of that fault line. You will basically use vulnerabilities to mm. like see if you look at Hamas, right? Mm-hmm. It is it is further stretching the U.S.'s uh, area of operation. Mm-hmm. U.S. has to deploy serious resources. Yeah. Whereas, uh, in case of Hamas, mm-hmm. uh, in case of the Houthis, mm-hmm. it's a very uh, cheap way yes. of, yeah. of uh, engaging in war. Very asymmetric, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. In some context, U.S. did that with Russia. So <laughs> Afghanistan is a good example. No, even in Ukraine, mm-hmm. they got Ukraine, their armies course. by yeah. just supporting Ukraine a bit. That's it. Yeah, some money. You just yeah. flow yeah. some cash in there, and then the Ukrainians will take the brunt of the whole thing. Yeah, yeah. Proxy war essentially. Yeah. yeah. So it's like the European uh, uh, Secretary General sent the lady. Hmm. Ursula. You, yeah. Hmm. Uh, Europe st- completely stands behind Ukraine. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Stand behind. <laughs> <laughs> right. So hmm. you know. So that is. Uh, so I I I think it'll be. Uh, what is this serious concern right now is more the uh, the 
for 24 mm -hmm. is what is happening in Middle East. The Middle East. Ukraine is not going to go, there's not going to be much change either way. Mm -hmm. 24 is a year of lots of elections, right? Elections yeah. in Pakistan, elections yeah. in India, in Russia. China, no, China doesn't have elections. The US, uh, you know. Yeah. Do you think that's going to impact the way the world so, goes? You know, that's an interesting dynamic because you know where the where the you 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 know where the outcome uh, certainty of the outcome is. Yeah. So, in Russia, we know what the yeah, India yeah. more or less we know. Yeah. US is up US is me. that's interesting. In US is interesting how that plays out, but uh. the impact of that is the president swears swears in in in, in, in twenty five early twenty five. Yeah. 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 So that you know Trump hmm. uh, seems to be. You think Trump could come back to power? I I think so. Okay. But the US is clearly a very divided society and very divided. a very low margin of difference. Yeah, it's, it's almost 50-50. Everything yeah. is almost 50-50 over yeah, there. So that yeah. is uh, hmm. an issue. So, I, I think, because uh, uh, we see Biden uh, his, and his cabinet are, hmm. you know, are not perceived as very divisive even within the US population. We see Biden has a serious limitation with his age. Yes, clearly. So, there is talk that Hillary mm. and Obama run it from behind. <laughs> Clearly, someone's running the country. I mean, yeah. someone is. Yeah. It's not Biden. It's not uh, Kamala. Someone is doing it. So maybe Hillary and Obama together. Yeah, because leadership always, Trump, whatever people liked or didn't like, mm. was device, decisive and yeah. front. So, you, you had clear visibility of mm. understanding. It may not be as per, you know, he was an outsider from politics. So yes. His decisions were very... Radical in that sense, yeah. because it was not as per what people would predict mm. normally in a in a political uh, sense, yeah, or a geopolitical sense. But it was it was very decisive, decisive leadership. Yeah, yeah. So, so you know, people rally around people. In all of you, you cannot please anyone, but yeah, you know. So they saw that versus Biden. So now it's a total. It's a, it's a very lopsided contest. contest. So, who do you think the Democrats will put up as president? I mean, it's obviously, it's one Biden. You think so? Yeah. You think Biden will run, will run again? That's what they're saying. My God, imagine that guy running again. It's a, it's a clear loss. It's, it's Isn't a, it already done? Yeah, well, <laughs> I was imagining I was imagining they'll throw up somebody like Michelle Obama or something. Who knows? I doubt. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oprah Winfrey. We've, 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 we've gone over the thing whether the US will have a black president. Mm. Now yeah. you have a, a black president yeah. who is a lady uh -huh. is another uh, you know step which has never happened. Mm. So mm. that is perceived in the US as anybody's guess. Uh, what do you think of what do you make of Vivek Ramaswamy? So these guys coming up making noise but you know yeah. mainstream US how much they appeal I know he wants to be Trump's running mate. Yeah, he does want to yeah. be that, yes. So, you know, so they're constantly in the low because the Indian population base. Hmm. It's very small, yeah. percentage-wise. So, he's appealing not to the, it's a few million, I think. Hmm. Uh, but who else he appeals to, you know, a constituency is anybody's guess. The Trump voter, typically, the MAGA voter. That, that's yeah, but the, as a, see, as a running mate is fine, but, hmm. you know, uh, because then it, the, the dynamics change. Yeah. But it's not, he, he naturally he pitched for the number one position. He did, yeah. To, to, yeah. I doubt the US is ready for... For a Hindu president? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's not ready for a Hindu president. Yeah. Way, way far down the line, yeah. if it ever happens. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You think India and China could go to war sometime? I doubt. Hmm. Too dangerous for both nations? Too much to lose? No. Not too, you also look at too much to lose and what to gain. No? Mm, what you to gain? What I'm, is the end game? Does China want to take over India? No. Why would they want to do that? Yeah. Last thing they want. Yeah. yeah. So that was said in Ukraine's context also. Mm. See, West said uh, Putin is expansions wants to take over Ukraine. Mm. He's not shown any contention of doing that. And the reason was also that he doesn't have a capacity to take over and run a country. Mm. Yeah. So when you do that, it's not just because you want to. Mm. What is your final gain or objective? Yeah. So I doubt. See, also you have to understand in what we uh, have, have sort of uh, to touch upon is what we call neo-colonialism. Neo-colonialism. Yes. Neo-colonialism is 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 controlling outcomes, controlling movement of goods, controlling people. It's not 
doesn't mean controlling uh, the actual territory. yeah for territory that's so right you have influence to have desired outcomes hmm. by controlling certain elements hmm. within a nation a country or geographic area hmm. but by not physically going and dislodging the local people and their you know, power whatever uh, and yeah. putting you know boots on the ground hmm. and running a country yourself yeah that i th- think is on and if, now you to see we live in a virtual world hmm. so neo colonialism is run on this there you have it yeah yeah is run on on based on narratives on controlling people's uh, minds yeah that's a very uh, very potent tool hmm that's right so uh, it's not based on geographical hmm. uh, so i doubt that china wants to you know to uh, take over parts of india no but one of the objectives you could have for a war is that you want to humiliate the leader like what like what mao did to to nehru i know i know yeah hmm that tension is already crossed hmm whether we got humiliated or not is not the issue who got humiliated is is a question of what happened in galwan galwan so that the, we know yeah right but what they are slowly transacting their influence in, in nepal is increasing yes so they are progressing slowly hmm Okay, mm-hmm. on our border, mm-hmm. it means sometimes changing the border, but the line of the line of control, actual control, control, LAC, yeah, moving that boundary mm. somehow. But mm. in terms of influence, we saw what is happening in Bhutan. Mm. They are all so at where we thought we are vulnerable, mm-hmm. and they are actually uh, moving forward. They are progressing. So, what's the deal with, deal with Bhutan right now? The, the Chinese are making inroads. Yeah, you know, Chinese settled a deal with them. No, so take so India was supposed to, is supposed to be the guarantor of security. Yeah, yeah, but that's changing. That's changing now. In Nepal now, also like with the Agni Vir issue, uh-huh. they have stopped uh, sending soldiers soldiers to the Gorkha regiment. Uh-huh. Right. Uh huh. Now there is talk. Putin wanted Putin offer uh, uh, Nepalese former security people mm. and others. Uh, 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 incentive of getting Russian citizens in one year if you go and fight in Ukraine. I see. So mm. now the Gorkhas, maybe you know, uh, the the Chinese army is already. We have a relationship, uh, strong means old historic relationship with the Nepalese yeah. army. Mm-hmm. The Chinese have already long ago started making those inroads within the within the Nepalese army. So you think the Chinese could have their own Gorkha regiment sometime? Can. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a big problem for India. Yeah. That's a big 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 deep multi-layered issue for us then. Yeah. I mean, I can think of so many th- things that would go wrong. Yeah. All right, so that's that's one thing that's going on, huh? Yeah. Right. How do you see India's rise, India's growth? You are you optimistic overall? So yeah, India So if you take India's uh, in the recent past, hmm? uh ukraine was an unfortunate event mm. but actually helped india it did help india yeah yeah and primarily in in energy mm-hmm. we not only got energy cheap but we started making windfall profits <laughs> by re-exporting it to because the us first came hard to <laughs> stop us from buying that energy and buy it from them yeah which we didn't officially succumb to because yeah. that would be a societal move yeah india yeah. could not in no way afford it yes right? so that helped india economically mm. and also you know helped us see, uh, our energy security mm. uh, we are what i see the growth in the economy as very prevalent mm. uh, which is for number of reasons you know uh, uh, one is the f- what i call the formalization of the economy so we all know there is a there is a cash or a black economy yes and a white economy yes right? which continues to be there mm-hmm. but there is a lot of formalization of the black economy into white economy mm-hmm. because of gst because of use of upi upi all these uh, uh things because of distribution of uh uh loans uh, or payouts to the poor mm-hmm. through the banking system the banking system that's right so mm-hmm. those are steps on formalization of economy uh uh-huh. where india lacks is that uh, if you c- compare it to china mm-hmm. okay we still have to spend more money on r&d on critical areas oh yes okay mm. although we are we have progressed on infrastructure so yeah. there is a lot of uh, progress made in the last 10 years 10 years yeah. but there are certain areas which are very critical mm. uh, 
uh, for India, which need more attention. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are seeing what happened with the French. So we are making allies. We are we are still on the which has economic and security consequences, like this this uh, sort of uh, agreement with France on how it is moving. Jet engine thing is very important for India. Mm. So we all, uh, we have we have partnership with technology mm. in uh, in climate change in energy. Mm -hmm. So uh, that will all boost India. Yes. Okay. But I think there are a lot of areas where we need more uh, attention. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, because see, geographically we don't see right now we have a threat from China. Right? Mm -hmm. From sorry, from Pakistan. From Pakistan. No. Yeah. But a threat from China is not from that much from the north than them surrounding us regionally, locally on on the seas. On the seas. So you see them, their mm. presence in Bangladesh, in, in Myanmar, in Sri, Sri Lanka, Lanka, in Maldives now. Djibouti as well. Yeah. All the way to Djibouti. Yeah. yeah. So that is, is more a security concern. Huh. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm not saying this diminishes the concern in, in the north. But it's anybody's guess how strategically important is mm. you know them intruding. Mm. But that is again has to be looked because Pakistan is weak as of now. Mm. So we don't see what they used to call a two front war. Mm. Okay, mm. Pakistan, and then the counter China's presence there, the U.S. is very active mm. because they are active in the AFPAC area. Mm. So I don't see that as a vulnerability okay. as much as the rest over a longer period of time. The Indian Ocean region. Yeah. Mm. You know, as we saw clearly in Maldives. So yes. Maldives, as such, is not important. It's the important shipping routes which pass from right through there. Yeah. Right through there. Yeah. Yeah. So that is the importance. Mm. So, and then of course we are uh, uh, on the uh, on the larger geopolitical level. We are going towards BRICS. It's complex, and mm. we have to delicately balance. Yes. How far we are successful in balancing that is important. Mm -hmm. You know, right? Because we cannot, you know, go either side. Mm -hmm. So we are dependent on Russia on uh, basically on energy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Their exports to India has grown maybe 20, 30 fold yeah. since the Ukraine crisis. Ukraine war, yeah. Uh, but at the same time, we are dependent on the US for defense, for technology, for you know, trade, mm -hmm. other areas. Mm -hmm. So uh, we cannot, uh, you know, go either or. Mm. Like I said, the France is interesting. They wanted to join BRICS, but Putin which closed. The, you know, so it, it gives you one interesting, uh, you know, way of angle of looking. Uh -huh. So P French were not, uh, you know, sort of cons uh, uh, this thing against the thing. If they, th because they knew Russia is there, mm -hmm. that also shows that you know there it's an indirect way. So that's another thing where India is uh, is. When uh, when we talked about G20 uh -huh. of not being the mediator, the the lead in the global south or bringing the issues of the global south mm -hmm. emerging as a leader and mediator, mm -hmm. but it is in a way tacit way also emerging as a mediator between uh, Europe uh, versus Russia mm -hmm. and the US. Mm -hmm. so yeah, you right. remember before the Ukraine crisis, right? the French president tried a lot to. He did. He did a lot of that. Yeah, yeah. diplomacy, one-to-one yeah. -one diplomacy with Putin. Putin. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And if you remember when Trump reimposed the sanctions on Iran, mm -hmm. he tried to do it then also. Mm, yes. That Macron. time also, he he made a lot of attempts with mm. the U.S. to to not uh, to not to allow that. Mm. So that clearly shows that they're sitting in the middle. You know. Yes. So they are getting sort of uh, impacted and sandwiched. Yes. Between that rivalry. Mm -hmm. So, you know, so it is, I won't call it collateral damage, but it is sort of that. Yeah, France has always had kind of a quasi-independent foreign policy. Yeah. Yeah. So there, uh, so France, Germany, because what happened after Nazi thing were, uh, uh, you know, marginalized. Yes. Like with Japan. Same thing as Japan. Ex exactly the same, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. But France still continued to, you know, yeah. hold, uh, uh, you know, be... Uh, on in the defense areas, mm. make its own choices. Yes. So that unlike the UK, for example, unlike the UK also. Yeah, UK and US is is closely. Yes. The UK is a satellite state now. That's what it is. Yeah. yeah. So after Brexit, actually, that was a mis mm. big uh, mistake. 
for the UK. Their last real prime minister was John Major. After that, it's been a bunch of nobodies coming yeah. and going out. Yeah. <laughs> so that, so it's interesting. So mm. you know, India's rise is very evident. Mm -hmm. But how do we secure that rise? So you, when you grow, it's like you know, you 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 drive a scooter, then you get into a car, and mm. then you get into an aeroplane. Mm. Yeah. So it's fine to have the toy, but you then have to understand that you have to change to operate that better. Yes, that's right. You have to the dimensions change. So, so the world looks up to India. Mm. Okay. So India will is going through. A, so there is an internal dynamic. Yeah. Which we, which is the politics. Mm -hmm. It's the economy. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we still have 400 million poor people. We cannot. Just look at one dimension. Yes. Uh, in this budget also, we talked about inclusive growth. Mm -hmm. So we have to continue to sustain those people mm -hmm. while growing. Yes. So we have to adopt a balanced approach. Yes. The second thing is we have to savings rates are declining. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, we because the economy is growing. One other dimension is credit, whether it's uh, the individual the, uh, or the government. Mm -hmm. So that also we have to watch we because consumption will grow and so will the GDP and the economy. Mm -hmm. But the debt uh, uh, debt to GDP ratio and the debt on individual and when I talk of households mm -hmm. is also increasing. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that I think is is an area of concern because okay. you know right now it's fine. It's you know we've had a huge old reserves or whatever because of asset valuations and all. Mm -hmm. But we need to watch that we don't go the U.S. way because uh -huh. that's exactly the U.S. way. That is the U.S. way, yeah. They Pile have on the, the luxury of having a reserve currency because they can print paper. They can print paper, yeah. We don't. We can't do that, yeah. So debt is something you have to watch. Yeah. Keep it very close. Management up. is important. Mm. I think we've got it down to 4.5 percent. Okay. Deficit. Mm -hmm. yeah, and we have plans to reduce further. Okay. I read the statistics from the budget. I think 20% of a budget goes in just on interest repayment. I see, 20%. Yes. Wow, okay. Mm -hmm. So, and our jet to be ratio is also in, in that 20-30% rate. I see. So, you have to forge that. So, for that, naturally, you have to, that debt you have to substitute by more investments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we find infrastructure, startup, make in India. Mm -hmm. All those initiatives are there. Yeah. So you have to continue on that path. Right. And, uh, uh, but like I said, major area we are not investing is R&D. That is an area of serious concern. Yeah. The education system and the R&D. Education uh, now is, you know, it's, it's it's defunct according to me. The word. It is defunct. Yeah. yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah. It's, it's, we it's, have it's, to it's, totally revamp the education. Completely revamp the whole thing. Yeah. It's terrible. You know, it's, you know, we can't go by do bata do char because you don't need to run that. You can see it on your phone. So you can learn everything on your phone. We need a totally different paradigm for education yeah, today. We yeah. have to base our education based on uh, it's 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 it has to change, revamp completely. Yeah, it it has to impart real skills, real yeah. skills. And once you have the skills, get out of the system and start working. And re real skills based on what you're saying because yeah. there is, we are like I said we are going to a disruptive age. Yeah. So AI like I was at. Uh, somebody's place recently like chat gpt is mm. especially people who deal with content or uh -huh. words and so they're saying we use this 40 percent of staff is redundant <laughs> there you go you know yeah, yeah. so the wherever that ai is replacing you have to understand that you know you you have to reskill people to mm. for the new age yes yes second thing we have which i always uh, uh, feel is that see we have created this aspirational uh, in, in careers, this aspirational uh, 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 sort of environment mm -hmm. where being a certain skill level and progressing higher mm -hmm. without demanding demand and supply. Mm -hmm. So there is a need for a plumber. Yeah. And this is if you look at the US, plumbers make a lot of money. Uh -huh. But here, if you have a guy who you trained as an engineer, he will not go do a plumbing job, whereas he can make much more money. Yeah, that, that sort of mindset is there. Yeah. yeah. So you yeah. have to also go and work on that aspect of, yeah. you know, dignifying uh, certain yeah. jobs and labor. Yeah. Yeah. Which actually make more economic sense. Mm, yes. 
so you you know you have to match the skill sets according to the demand that's right and what will be the future demand so, mm. so it is very important that you frame your education and training yeah around that that's right the education system really needs to be totally revamped no, revamped if you because that has to be you know sort of talked about and sold that this is the future job profiles we need mm -hmm. and this is how we fill them mm -hmm. you know because that's where the demand is because i feel a lot of skills are basically done on a higher level without an understanding like i'll give a simple example we send our chil children to study outside right yeah so if they continue to stay outside mm -hmm. there is a there is they have uh, visa issues mm -hmm. and uh, there also there is an issue with with jobs right? mm -hmm. but you are spending 10x of the money and if they come back and work in india with the person who is the same skill set yeah or discipline mm -hmm. okay so you you wasted 10 times more money totally training yourself so that's bad economics bad economics doesn't make sense yeah so we yeah. need to you know build more in capacity here yes. institutions here mm -hmm. education needs to revamped education i believe is a is a non profit sector mm -hmm. yeah uh, that is a very fundamental issue mm, it's been turned into a business sector to sector today it's about yeah, money no, and mm -hmm. then the uh, uh, regions of the us i'm not saying us but hybrid is how do you uh uh Uh, link the academic institutions, think tanks, and research mm -hmm. to the private sector and the government. Important to do that. Yeah. Yes. So, so that has different multiplier effects in terms of not only employment, mm -hmm. but also in increasing the capacity of the government and private sector. Yes. In terms of uh, outsourcing R and D and other things. Yeah. Okay. We are doing it to some extent with the IITs, etc. but mm. that needs to be enlarged because of our size we need to do it at a much larger scale yeah totally. which will require if you look at uh, the west their uh, their universities have billions of dollars of budgets yeah and that is based on this is based on government fund of investing in those that is a, the correct model because you are investing in the education yeah you're investing in r and d mm -hmm. which is which leads to overall growth yes so right we need to understand the ecosystem and reframe our education systems yeah uh and then there are other reforms in terms of language and all because i think it's changing because i re i remember till not long ago uh, uh, other states in the country english was not the primary medium of instruction mm -hmm. till i think 10th grade or something mm -hmm. so that university because english is whether we like it or not an important language mm -hmm. to, you know to common language okay mm -hmm. uh we may be nationalistic but frankly practically hindi is not uh you know the common language between globally yeah oh within the country also mm, yeah okay. mm -hmm. english is because mm. it's a legacy of the british but it a fact is a fact mm. and also because your all your research outside everything is is in the english language so i think we need to commonize that factor also that the medium of instruction to a large extent keeping the local sensitivities and political and social thing should be in english language because i know that i used to interview people for uh, certain jobs so uh, i think till 10th grade or something in certain st state run schools the medium instruction is the local language okay hmm. so their proficiency in english is not very good okay so that also see these are practical measures uh, which we we need to we need to address hmm. um we have to like i said civilizationally our identity is important yeah because that's who we are yes you know, how do you define yourself mm -hmm. how do you distinguish yourself but at the same time you have to build a modern society progressive society okay who you know who's an as an emerging power in the world mm -hmm. who's perceived as an emerging power so you have to be you have to have global linkages you have a large diaspora yeah so india uh, you know we have to link all that footprint and understand our indian rises at a, a different parameter so i i don't see the yeah like i said this this particular thing we have been sending our uh, your uh, indian navy to protect our yes so that's a, that's a big vulnerability but mm. uh, uh, 
and i was uh, reading recently that actually the a uh, lot of major shipping lines have refused to operate from there so it is actually uh, very interesting the shipping cargo rates mm -hmm. were uh, had totally gone down during pandemic then suddenly reversed and went way <laughs> high okay and then had sort of normalized and gone down uh -huh. now they've gone again high because basically going around the horn of africa uh, that's a long long journey so that yeah increase the demand of cover capacity by 40% because what time of voyage yeah. taken is 40% more which translate roughly to how much more capacity you right yes you need mm -hmm. so i think those are vulnerabilities mm -hmm. uh, but i don't see india has any other uh, uh, threat mm -hmm. or vulnerability besides that mm -hmm. besides energy yes we are self sufficient in food mm -hmm. uh, you know another thing i want to address is it came to my mind so when we are going into the brics currency yeah so but the uh, the uh, reserve banks all over the world have started buying gold mm -hmm. that's yes. why gold is sort of yes 22 23 mm -hmm. maximum purchases of gold were done yes india our reserve bank doesn't buy it mm -hmm. means, means buys also or does not but we have large reserves of gold within the country within the country yeah so we need to find out ways how because that gives a strength to our currency yes so we have to find if it's going that way how we can monetize it hmm. we have tremendous amounts of gold, gold. within the country yeah because yeah. i was on the board of catalysia in bank so smaller banks their larger portion of their liability is hmm. gold loans i see so how we can monetize the gold reserves hmm. which are held by households in india privately hmm. right yeah you know is is another huge opportunity which has uh, great significance for our economic strength mm -hmm. if we go to that basket of currencies and that alternate currency as gold mm -hmm. how do we monetize that right okay. all right yeah. all right so thank you for this wonderful overview of geopolitics globally really yes. interesting yes, thank and, you and uh, we'll do this again next time yeah yeah thank you so much yeah, thank you so that was the conversation hope you liked it if you enjoyed this please share this on whatsapp and other media Thank you very much and I'll see you soon.